Hi students, welcome to this video session. My name is Samuel Chuku Emeka. In this video session, we shall discuss statistics. So let's get to my site. Uh, click on my picture, mathematics, statistics. Uh, click on the notes tab. In this video session, we shall discuss uh, data organization, part one. So when you have collected your data, uh, let's say you uh, collected your data, is a raw data, you will need to organize your data. Uh, one of the ways we organize data is by using a frequency distribution table also known as a frequency table. What does a frequency table do? It uh, organizes your data in classes. So it breaks up your data in classes and it lists, it lists the frequencies of those data values that fall in each class. Uh, it helps us to understand the nature of the distribution of a data set. So let's start with an example. A good Samaritan, which means a generous giver, asked for the uh, trouser sizes of the staff at the Divine Mercy Orphanage. The raw data of the sizes are listed below. So these are the uh, sizes, the pant sizes of the staff. Question 1a. Draw a frequency distribution table for the data. Your table should have seven classes. B. Compute the statistical properties of the data of the classes. So, what you want to do first is uh, let's um, let's uh, get. We know that it's seven classes. So the first thing we want to do is to get the class size or class width. That is the first thing we want to do, class size or class weight. Uh, and uh, we have a formula for that. Uh, we see that the class weight is equal to the range divided by the number of classes. Here they gave us seven classes that we shall have to uh, organize this data in seven classes. Sometimes uh, they don't give you how many classes you need to organize it. They just ask you to organize it. So in that case, you have to, uh, you have to, you know, make a good decision on how many classes will be important. So it is better to have a uh, fewer classes with a large data values uh, in each class than to have a lot of classes with small data values uh, in each class. So you want to uh, make a good decision based on that. Uh, so we, our class size will be the range and the range divided by the number of classes and a range is a maximum data value minus minimum data value. When we look at this data set, we see that the uh, minimum data value is 32, while the maximum data value is 50. Uh, let me get my calculator. So we, we uh, do 50 minus 32 equal to 18 divided by 7. <coughs> and that gives us 2.57. So our class size or class weight we always need to round up, not round down, round up. And if you round this up, it gives you three. So three is the class size. Uh, some, you now, the next thing to do is to write your classes or class intervals, what we call classes or class intervals. So we want to start with 32. But it is not a hard and fast rule. Depending on your data values, 
you might want to start with a smaller number than 32 provided you eventually won seven classes so in this particular example which i have done already i started with 32 but you must not always start with the minimum data value you must not you can start with a data value that is lower than the minimum it just depends on the data values that was given to you so just take note of that so the next thing is to write my class intervals we call it class intervals uh, or class limits that is what we call it so I'm going to just open up in uh, one note so that I can do this and you see me do it uh, I will call this a data organization part one okay um so i will come here i need to i know that my class uh, size is three and i want to use 32 as a uh, my first class interval so i'm going to uh, get a pen that has a bigger size so i have a 32 so my class intervals i have 32 to what class now the i have to now at least now this 32 is known as the uh, lower class interval or lower class limit we say class interval or class limit and uh, i know that my uh my class size is three so i will have to list the uh, lower class intervals of all the classes first uh, because one formula for class size is uh, the lower class interval of second class minus lower class interval of first class so i will just do 32 plus 3 is 35 35 plus 3 is 38. 38 plus 3 is uh, 41. 41 plus 3 is 44. 44 plus 3 is 47. 47 plus 3 is 50. Now let me count these classes to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I really have to because I need only seven classes. So I stop here. So these are the lower class intervals of the classes. 32 is the lower class interval of the first class. 35 is the lower class interval of the second class. Uh, 38 is the lower class interval of the third class, and so on and so forth. Then, the next step I have to do is to now write the upper class interval. And the way to do this is, with class intervals, it separates the classes, but with gaps. Okay? Class intervals separates the classes with gaps. And the gaps... If, it's, uh, if your class interval uh, are integers, then uh, the gap is separates is by one, by difference of one. Uh, if your class interval uh, are uh, decimals to one decimal place, then it separates the, the gap. The gap is 0 0.1. I mean gap, 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 GAP. So if the the class intervals are integers so the gap is by difference of one so look at what i'm saying here uh, 35 minus 1 should is 34. so there is a gap between 34 and 35. the gap is what i'm talking about between 34 and 35 there is a gap so uh if your uh if your uh class intervals are integers whole numbers like we have here 
then you know that the gap is by one. Okay, uh, if your class intervals are decimals rounded to one decimal place, then the gap is 0 0.1. If your class intervals are decimals rounded to two decimal places, then the gap is 0 0.01. Uh, so take note of that. Uh, we shall see this in the second example uh, for the decimal place, rounded to one decimal place. So what this is the uh, upper class interval of the first class. And the same way, uh, another formula for class size is that a class size is a upper class interval of second class minus upper class interval of first class. So if you want to find the upper class interval of second class, you just add the upper class interval of first class to the class size. So we also do 34 plus 3 is 37. 37 plus 3 is 40. Okay. Or you can simply, you know, that's the way you do it. You keep adding. Or you can simply know it is a difference of 1 from this lower class interval of the next class. Okay, but the better way is to add 3 to all of them. 43 plus 3 is 46. 46 plus 3 is 49. And then 49 plus 3 will give you 52. Okay, now you want to make sure that the uh, lower class interval of the first class and the upper class interval of the last class includes all these values. You want to make sure. Uh, remember, we, we had that um, our minimum is 32 and our maximum is 50. So when we look at this here, the maximum here is 52. So it's included and it still makes it up to seven classes. If you used, let's say, 30, okay, you could still make it up. Yeah, but just be careful on what you use. Like I said, I use 32. Someone else might use 31. Someone else might use 30. Yeah, but all in all, you want to make sure that, number one, that it is seven classes because the question says you should use seven classes. And number two, that these values, these data values, are all included in these classes. You want to make sure. Okay. After you have done this, the next thing you do is to list your frequencies. Uh, and you see we have a data size, a data size of 35. Uh, how do I know it's 35 anyway? You can count this, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 1, 2. 13 times 2 is 26. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. So, you want to make sure you count it. It's very important. Uh, sigma F. Sigma of the frequency, sigma F, is 35. You want to make sure that you count it. So, you start listing the um, the frequencies. But before you actually list the frequencies, is it, it is good to tally it. To tally. Okay. It is good to tally it first before you write the frequencies. Uh, we, I have already done this. I just want to show you how you do that. You know. So this is the tally. And these are the frequencies. You're going to list here for these classes. Um, you, you want to start from the columns because the rows are too much, are kind of too much. You want to, you don't want to miss any data. And, you know, um, you want to use shapes, okay? You want to start from the columns. Uh, you can start from the rows, but you might get, you know, it's too much data here in the rows. So you might want to start from the columns. And each one you have done, you want to use a particular shape 
to denote it. Okay, see what I mean? Like 36, we have 36 as number one here. So 36 falls in the second class. I put a tally here. The next one is 44. I put a tally here. I, I, for, for this second class, if you want to write two, if you want to write two, to make to know that the second class, you can just write two. Uh, for this, uh, this one is one, two, three, four, five. The, uh, this 44 falls in the fifth class. You might want to write five here. Uh, 40 falls in the third class. You might want to write three. Okay. So that is your tally. So each one you have counted, just write on top of it. Okay. Two, five, three. And then 38 falls in the third class. In the third class, that is second tally. You write a three also here so that you know that you have counted it because if you don't mark it off as you count you might make mistake and count it again when you have finished okay that is the way you do it and i have done it here already uh, when you have finished it okay these are the tallies you write the frequencies how do you write uh, with the tallies if it's the fifth, if you count it the fifth time, mark it off. Okay, if you count it the fifth time, you mark it off. Do you see what I did? Yeah. So each one you count, you mark it off after that. And you make sure, you make sure, uh, of course, the tallies are the frequencies. You write it out and you add it up. You make sure you add up that the summation of the frequency gives you 35. You see why it is good to count it from the beginning to make sure. Then, after you've done that, this is your frequency table. But the other question says that you should compute the statistical properties of the classes. So, you have to get the class midpoints. Midpoints are the middle points. Middle points of each class. And this means the lower class interval plus the upper class interval divided by 2. Okay, 32 plus 34 will give you a 66. Divided by 2 gives you 33. So that is how you do it. Uh, 35 plus 37 gives you 72. Divided by 2, that gives you 36. So you calculate the class midpoints. And I wrote all these formulas. You know, these are... Uh, the formulas and the definition class width is the size of the class uh, class intervals separate the classes but with gaps we talked about it between the classes class midpoints are just the middle points of the classes now the next one after writing your class midpoints are what we call the class boundaries boundaries class boundary when you talk of a boundary like a boundary line right so you mark the boundary line from one country to another so it gets the boundary there's no gap actually with class boundaries it still separates the classes but without gaps how do you find the class boundaries okay the class boundaries the first thing the formula for class boundaries is uh, you want to find the upper upper class boundary of the first class and why did i why not why don't you start finding from the lower because the lower didn't give the formula okay the formula for class boundary is the the upper class boundary upper UCB, upper class boundary of the first class. To find the upper class boundary of the first class, you will add the, up, the average, the average of the upper class boundary of the first class and the lower class boundary of the second class. That average gives you the upper class boundary of the first class. Okay, remember for the midpoint, midpoint is just the average of the lower class interval and the upper class interval of the same class, of the same class. 
Okay, for the midpoint is the average of the lower class interval and the upper class interval of the same class. But for the class boundaries, for to find the upper class boundary, you need the average of the upper class interval of the first class and the lower class interval of the second class. So 34 plus 35 gives you 69. Okay, 34 plus 35 gives you 69. 69 divided by 2 gives you 34.5. You see that? You can also do 37 plus 38 uh, gives you a 75. Right? It gives you 75. 75 divided by 2 gives you 37.5. So that is the way you find the upper class boundary of fish class. It will be the average of the upper class interval of that class and the lower class interval of the next class. Now, how do you find the lower class boundary? So, how do you find the lower class boundary of the classes? The lower class uh, boundary of each class, like let's say the second class, and, I, I, and I'm going to tell you why we, we don't do the first class immediately. Uh, lower class uh, boundary of the second class is the average, the average of the lower class interval of, the, of that class and the upper class boundary upper class interval of the previous class <laughs> okay <laughs> i repeat the lower class boundary of a class is the average of the lower class interval of that class and the upper class interval of the previous class so you see that it still gives you for the second class it still gives you 34.5 which shows there are no gaps. No gaps. Okay? No gaps. So, let me repeat again. Upper class boundary of a class, okay, is the average of upper class interval of that class and the lower class interval of the next class. While the lower class interval of a class is the average of the lower class interval of that class and the upper class interval of the previous class. So do you now see why I couldn't find the lower class boundary of the first class immediately? Because I don't know what the previous class is. So for me to find the lower class boundary of the first class, I can actually do it two ways, okay? I can either presume, okay, if there was a previous class here, that would be what? That would be what? 32, 32. Okay. Sorry, not 32, 32. If there was a previous class, 32 minus 3 will give us uh, 29. And 34 minus 3 will give us uh, 29. 34 minus 3 will give us uh, 31. So if there was a previous class, it would be 29 to 31. If there was a previous class. So what I would do to find the lower class boundary of the first class, one way I could do that is to assume that there was a previous class. And then I take the average of the lower class interval of that first class and the upper class interval of that previous class, I assumed. So 32 plus 31, that gives us a 63. 63 divided by 2 gives us 31.5. That is one way to do it. Okay, another way to do it. Another way to find the uh, lower class boundary of the first class. Let's say you don't want to assume. You don't want to assume a previous class. Well, another formula for class size is lower class boundary of second class minus lower class boundary of first class. Or... Upper class boundary of second class minus upper class boundary of, of first class. And that applies to all these, okay? You can also say that class size is uh, 
lower class boundary of fifth class minus lower class boundary of fourth class or upper class boundary of fifth class minus upper class boundary of fourth class okay or lower class boundary of seventh class minus lower class boundary of sixth class or upper class boundary of seventh class minus upper class boundary of sixth class that is the second way of finding the lower class boundary of the first class okay so Oh, the, the you don't want you, I mean the easiest thing to do is just find the uh, write the first of all write the upper class boundary of the um, of the first class and just you know write all the class boundaries here go ahead and write all the upper class boundaries here and begin to know that this there's no gaps so this is this this will be equal to this this will be equal to this, 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 this will be equal to this. To fill it up. Okay? Remember when we did the class intervals, we listed the lower class intervals first. But when you're doing the class boundaries, it is better to list the upper class boundaries first. And then just know that the upper class boundary of the first class should be the lower class boundary of the second class. Upper class boundary of the second class should be the lower class boundary of the third class. To make it easier, there are no gaps between the class boundaries. No gaps. And, you know, because you ask yourself, for between 34 and 35, what of the data values in between? Where would they go? Okay. 34.3, 34.4. Where are they going to go? So, that is why we have class boundaries. So, you have... It does it does not separate the classes with gap with gaps okay it separates the classes without gaps why the class intervals separate the classes with gaps okay another issue is now finding the uh, upper class boundary of the last class in this case the seventh class so you could also just add three 49.5 plus the class size which is 3 to give you 52.5 or you could presume that there is an 8th class okay you could presume that there is an 8th class and if you presume that there is an 8th class that would be what 50 plus 3 is 53 so 52 plus 3 is 55 okay and then you now see that the upper class boundary upper class boundary of the seventh class will be the average the average of the upper class interval of that seventh class and the lower class interval of the next class of the eighth class so it gives you 52 plus 53 gives you 105 okay divided by 2 gives you 52.5 so either way Okay, but the easiest way is just add class size. Okay, add class size to 49.5 to get 52.5. Do you understand this? <laughs> okay, I've written all the formulas for you right here. So, you know, when you're reading it, it will be easier. Example 2. The table below shows the voltage measurements from a home. In the city of truth or consequences, New Mexico. I like the name of this city. <laughs> city of truth or consequences. This is the name of a city in New Mexico. <laughs> so I always I don't know. I've been using it. I've been using the name in my PowerPoint or uh, in my notes. City of truth or consequences. <laughs> New Mexico for 25 days. So the frequency is 20. That tells you that the frequency is 25 days. So each day they won, they measure, they, each day up to 25 days, they were measuring the voltage. And these values are one decimal place. They want you to draw a frequency table for the data. Your table should have five classes. And then compute the statistical properties of the classes. So the same way we did example one that is the same way we are going to do this uh, the only thing here is the gap like i said the gap the gap 
between the uh if you look at this the gap after writing the after finding your class size your class size is 0 0.2 okay uh, in this case your class size is 0 0.2 you will not need to round it to integer because it is uh, one decimal place remember when we did here you round your when we did here these are integers or whole numbers so your class size should be an integer it should be an integer okay uh, when your when your data values are one decimal places when your data values are one decimal places like this then your uh, class size you round it up to one decimal place as well okay you don't run it to integer so you run it to one decimal place as well so you always want to round up so now what if your data values were two decimal places then your class size you have to round it to two decimal places okay so the same way you add you write here we used 121.1 .1 as the minimum you add 0 0.2 it gives you 121.3 you add 0 0.2, it gives 121.5. You list it that way. Okay, now, but how will you now write this? Now, with the upper class interval, the upper class interval, it has uh, a gap. And that gap is a... Uh, it has a gap, and that gap is uh, 0 0.1. If they, if, if, they are if they are integers, the gap is 1. If they are, uh, if they are integers, the gap is one. If they are one decimal place, the gap is uh, zero point one. The gap. So you just do one twenty one point three minus zero point one. That gives you one twenty one point two, and then you keep adding zero plus zero point two. It gives you one twenty one point four plus zero point two. It gives you one twenty one point six, and the rest of them. So, if the integers, whole numbers, the gap is 1, the difference is 1, the gap between the uh, upper class interval of the first class and the lower class interval of the second class, okay, the gap is, uh, if the integers, if the data values are integers, the gap is 1, if the data values are decimals to one decimal place, the gap is 0 0.1. Okay, just take note of that. And with the class boundaries, is the same thing we did. Okay, average of the average of the uh, for the for this one, the upper class boundary of the first class, it will be the uh, average of the upper class interval of this first class and the lower class interval of the second class. Okay, and you see there are no gaps here. All right, thank you so much for listening, and please watch out for other videos. Thank you, and you have a good evening.